Hi, I'm Valder Beebe, and I host the Valder Beebe Show on FM radio and internet television. I am famously known for that celebrity interview, which I conduct by cell phone, in studio, or satellite media tours. Go to ValderBeebeShow.com, YouTube.com slash ValderBeebeShow, or our partnership network with Business in the Black, which is BlackSuccessAcademy.com, and click on the Valder BB Show channel. I'll see you there. Good morning, Valder. Good morning, Dr. Daniel Shaskez. How are you today? Very well, thank you. How are you? Well, thank you. You're my medical expert for today on the Valder BB Show, and I would love to know more information about encouraging dads and sons um, to get into conversation. What do you? What do you? What does uh, uh, this group need to know? Well, as part of our Mention It campaign, we have done surveys to look at how much men actually speak about health care in general to their friends, and in particular, how much they share with their sons. And it really turns out that not only are men bad patients, but they're ba bad communicators. And men, for whatever reason of discomfort or feeling that it's not manly to disclose some weaknesses, just don't talk to their families, and especially their sons, about health. Of course, this is something that is both beneficial to the men and to their sons, because this is how the sons will learn about disorders that are in the family, things that they may be at risk for later. And most importantly, they look to their fathers to be role models for how, how they can behave with their health as they get older themselves. Dr. Shock Kez is a medical doctor, and he's an attending urologist and director of the Center for Men's Health at the Cleveland Clinic. He's my guest this morning in our medical spotlight. Let me ask you, if there was a breakdown roughly of uh, fathers who don't talk or can't talk to their sons, do, do you know what that breakdown is between uh, ethnicities? Well, certainly in the uh, surveys that we've done, we showed that amongst respondents who were either African-American or Hispanic, they were less likely to say that they were comfortable speaking with their sons. But I think most interestingly, they had the largest uh, percentage who regretted that their fathers didn't talk to them about their health care. I think it shows that uh, people are eager to hear this message, even though the father may feel uncomfortable discussing it with their son, the sons want to hear this. And when you're trying to hide something like this in the survey, did it give us anything like the devastating impact when you try to hide it? Or, you know, because a lot of times you really can't hide it, but it's just found out too late. Sure. Well, we would need really sort of long-term data to know whether the discussions you know, in someone's teens has an impact later, but we do know that men in general are bad patients. They are far less likely to go for preventative care, and when there are new symptoms that develop, they tend to put it off. We hope that by improving communication when they're younger, they're going to feel more comfortable seeking care that they need as they get older. If there was one thing to take away from the survey, and the survey seems to have many, many good things, what do you want the audience to know? I think the most important thing for fathers to know is that even if their sons aren't asking about it, they want to know about your health. They look to you as a role model, and they look to you as someone that can provide them with information that is more accurate than maybe they read on the internet or hear for, from their friends. The father is the person that loves them, who wants them 
to be healthy as they get older, they should really be the, the key source of information and role model the behaviors that you want your son to eventually have. Dr. Chakas, is there a place on the web that my audience can go and get more information? Absolutely. At clevelandclinic.org slash mention it, you can find the results of the surveys and numerous resources to help start the conversation. The survey seems fantastic and interesting because we do um, understand what the survey is saying and we mothers or, or sisters or daughters, that kind of thing, we're really, really trying to help with this problem. So thank you for doing the survey. We really appreciate it. Thanks very much for having me on.